Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Develop the Ultimate Golf Game. As always, I'm your coach, Nathan Lenhart, and today we're gonna move into a little bit more advanced techniques for the short game. So join me here at the Richmond Country Club as we help you become a better chipper, putter, and bunker player. So let's get into that right now. All right, let's get into leg putting. So learning some good techniques to kind of get good distance control on the longer putts. So far too often, this is the number one thing I see on long putts with players, is their backswing is super short and they just try to accelerate after that, okay? So they think, okay, it's the same backswing as a regular normal putt, but then just hit it harder. And that can't be further from the truth because that's go that acceleration that you're doing there is just so inconsistent. And hitting up on it, things like that. We're going to get so many times the ball is going to be skidding and jumping, bouncing, and our dis distance control uh, and contact as well, the distance is just going to be off so much. So we need to learn to develop the sense that this backswing is longer. Okay, I want it to be more matching on both sides. Okay, my backswing should be a very similar distance to my through swing. Okay, I don't want to see my backswing go to my back foot here and then my forward swing go way past. All right, it's just really hard to time that and kind of be consistent with it. So, getting the sense that bigger backswing, maybe swinging slower. Okay, a lot of times I see like that short swing and they just get quick. Right, jerky, longer, slower swing. That's just gonna be through some practice, that's gonna be so much easier to consistently hit the center of the face, not have the ball jumping and bouncing all the time, okay? So, same kind of setups as we would with a regular putt. Now, for long, long putts, sometimes players like to feel, uh, they feel more comfortable, more solid with their feet a little wider on the long putts, as opposed to kind of where I'd normally be here for a regular length, getting a little wider, or even when we're in the wind, if it's a really windy day, having that, those feet a little wider, a little wider base under us to feel like we're more stable, stable so that when we're putting, um, we're not kind of getting blown around and that big swing is under control, okay? So, same type of thing, aiming. Just from now, I wanna think, okay, longer backswing, a little smoother. All right, just gonna be so much easier to be consistent. I'm not gonna go and leave one short by five, 10 feet, hit the next one long by five, 10 feet. I'm gonna be able to kind of keep it in that circle more often. Okay, let's talk about some different grip options that we could have. So we got the regular grip where our trail hand is on the bottom, our lead hand's on top, and we kind of fit them in together. But then there's ways that we can grip it differently to kind of help us if we're pulling the ball or we're pushing the ball. So another really popular grip is the lead hand low. Okay, so for me, left hand low. What this is typically good for here is it makes it a little tougher to close the face like that. So for someone who pulls the ball a lot, this uh, kind of putting stroke makes it a little bit easier to have you kind of straighten it out essentially trying to help you hit it a little more to the right. Push it, depending on what hand you are. Then we got uh, the claw or pencil type grip, where on the trail hand, the bottom hand, the fingers are kind of on, on top or on the side a little bit. The benefits of these are, you know, for players who get quite handsy, right, when they're putting stroke. So it's hard from this position, all you're really doing with your trail hand is guiding it. You're essentially using your lead hand here as the, as the main contributor of, of making this putting stroke, okay? And that trail hand's just kind of guiding it. You know, I used this grip uh, years ago when I, was, when I was competing for a little while, and I felt, even though it feels a little unstable there when you first begin, it starts to teach you how to use more of your body, your shoulders and, and that, to, to move the putter head because you don't have as much control there with your hands which for a lot of golfers is a good thing, right? To kind of get rid of some of that excess of hand movement, okay? And then another really uh, good one that I like is essentially taking your normal grip where that trail hand's on the bottom 
but placing your index finger down the side of the shaft, down the side of the grip there, okay? This essentially kind of keeps your normal putting grip, but it's really stabilizing the club, okay? Stabilizing the putter head there, as opposed to when that index finger is around there, there can be a lot of kind of rotation sometimes, okay? So those are kind of three ones that I've, I've always liked, um, but try to find something in there that kind of helps mold to, to what maybe your errors are, right? If you're pulling pots, let's get that left hand low. If you're feeling like you're quite handsy, let's do some work just with the claw or pencil there, okay? And if you feel just a little unstable, it's not bad, but a little unstable with the putter face, get that trail hand index finger down the side of the shaft. Okay, so let's get into talking about reading a green, green reading. How can we tell, what are some simple ways to kind of tell which way it's sloping, okay? So, obviously, first and foremost, we gotta take a look. Now, the lower that we can get to the ground, the better, right? The more kind of uh, eye level with the ground, the better. Now, if we have edges around the greens, like say, my, say there's an edge right here of the green where it's going off, get past that edge and get below the level of the ground, right? That's going to allow your eyes to get more level with the ground. Use the slopes off the edge of the greens to help you get below and get your eyes level because that's so much easier when your eyes are like this. It's so much easier to see that terrain being sloped one way or another, okay? So getting down low first, checking it from another side, all right? Again, getting low, but checking it from another side here. So for me, visually looking at this pot from that side and this side, you know, I get the idea, the sense that this side is, is higher than this side, okay? That's essentially what we're looking for. Which side is higher than the other? Uh, over here versus over here. My pot's kind of in the middle there, so I need to kind of think, how much is it going down now? I like to just um, think about high, medium, low, like the amount of slope, all right? A lot medium or a little. It's very simple that way. So what I want to do here, another way that we kind of look at this aside from just looking with our eyes is since I do have an idea of this slope visually going this way, I want to go over to the side and try to find the straight putt. Okay, so this is me kind of thinking, look, I believe this is probably where a straight putt would be, somewhere right in here. All right, finding the straight line first. Then from there, I can go ahead and move to my ball and think, okay, am I, am I feeling like I'm going up a hill going this way, all right? Or is it just flat all over? Now I see visually it's a little uh, higher there. So as I go over here, now I get the sense of, okay, now my ball is on this side slope here. And I would say that this would be a little, okay? Again, we don't have to be perfect. It's just, let's not overcomplicate it, all right? So I found my straight side. I know that this one's going to be going a little bit from the right to the left, okay? One other thing that, you know, I've always done in my career is feeling it with my feet, okay? So if I move this one out of the way, this putt here, if I stand to the side, right, and this takes practice just like anything, do I get the sense, and I can kind of go back and forth. Do I get the sense that I want to more kind of fall this way? Or do I get the sense that I want to kind of fall back this way, right? And right now I feel like it's pretty hard. I'd have to lean back a lot to fall back. But if I lean forward a little, I have the sense that my body wants to go that way. So that's simply just telling me that in my feet here, right? Again, it takes practice to get this sensation in your feet, but it's another way of telling you how, if it is breaking, first of all, and how much. Because okay, if you don't really feel anything there, there's a pretty good chance there's not much break at all, right? And then there's times where you're like, oh goodness, yeah, there's quite a bit. And we just need to know that obviously depending on the length of the putt is going to change how much it breaks. So if I have, let's say I have a little amount of break on a five foot putt here, okay? This thing might break, you know, I might aim at the right edge type of thing. But if I have the same putt and I go back to 10 feet, 
well then obviously I can't play right edge. There's more ground to cover. There's more time to let this ball keep curving. I'm gonna have to be playing it out um, outside. So the further we get away, again, keeping in mind, we gotta know is it a little, a medium or a lot amount of break, I'm gonna just incrementally start aiming further outside the hole there as I get further away. Okay. So I've read it from both sides. I've kind of felt it with my feet and I could if I'm really stumped, I could go on both sides of it, you know, step over your own line. Again, we want to make sure we don't get too close to the hole. That's just an etiquette thing because you can imagine other players, and this doesn't matter so much for just regular golf, but in tournament golfers, you know, we don't want our feet to be tracking all around the hole because that's obviously going to impact the way the ball is bouncing as it's coming into the hole for the next person playing. So somewhere in between the ball and the hole, you can kind of step over and get a sense, did I just walk downhill or uphill? Right? It's another way of doing it, right? If I just go like this, okay, I felt like I walked up a hill. The more you do it, the better sense you're gonna get of is that a little, a medium, or a lot. So from here, now I'm gonna think, okay, I got this you know, five-ish foot putt, it's a little break, I'm gonna go, I know it's turning, so if I hit a good putt that starts maybe just outside the right edge, I should have a pretty good chance of this thing going in with good speed, okay? So I'm kind of thinking with this, with putting, I'm kind of thinking if I can get that putt to be somewhere at the hole to a foot after. That's my personal preference. I'm not one that's trying to get it two feet past the hole after, um, but we're all a little different and that's where we need to develop our own sense of is this a little break of medium or a lot and how much we play with that. Because if you're someone who hits it hard, right? if you're someone who kind of bangs it into the back of the hole, the ball is traveling so fast, it doesn't take the break. It just kind of motors right through the break until it slows down, right? So if I'm gonna hit it hard, I gotta play this thing inside the hole. I can't give the hole away and play outside. But if I'm gonna play it gently and have it drip in, I'm gonna have to play it extra, okay? So that just takes some practice on knowing what am I comfortable with? What kind of speed am I comfortable with giving this? So I'm gonna hit this about a foot past the hole. Try to start it just outside the right edge. Okay. So the other last thing in terms of, of these pots is up or downhill. So I was so focused on, okay, which is this breaking? I never even thought to myself, is this up or downhill? I barely got to the hole because I didn't take into account that this was uphill and still kind of in winter at the moment of shooting this. So I need to know, and we can do this and kind of do it the same way that we did in terms of green reading, you know, right to left. I could come off to the side here, right? I could come off to the side and, and look at my putt. Obviously the further away we get from the line, the better, right? So if I back up quite a bit from my line here, further we get away from here, the better. I can kind of see which side is higher. Is my ball higher? Is the cup higher? Right? Very simple way of kind of measuring the slope, whether it's up or downhill. We can do the same things. I could stand this way, feel if I'm kind of falling towards the ball, or do I feel like I'm falling towards the hole? Okay, because this is all going to influence how much speed we need to play it, more speed if it's slower we're gonna to have to hit it harder it's not going to break as much when we hit it harder if it's downhill and slippery and fast and we got to hit it slow there's more time for that ball to be taking the break okay all right so one last thing i want to talk about in terms of putting here is helping us align better okay so a lot of players you might see on tv can use and will use a line on the ball all right so Right now I have this blue line drawn on that ball there. And the reason I want to do that, and I like to personally, it's not for everybody, but if I go and put this ball down, okay, if I go and put that down here, and I go behind the ball and look, I can see where is that line aimed, okay? It's a very simple way to help us align. So if I go and, I, if I, let's say I think this line is correct and I'm off like this, and I kind of look at the line on my putter versus that blue line on the ball, I'm like, no, that doesn't match up. Okay, I gotta kind of get that line on my putter better, and then kind of get my feet in there like that. 
okay? So just using a line like that is going to be huge for being more consistent on, more consistent on your aiming and alignment. Some people like one line, okay? I prefer, I'd like to have at least one drawn line as opposed to the line that the ball comes with because that's so small, that's so faint, it's hard to see. This blue line or whatever color is just so much easier. And there's some stencils out there that you can draw three lines on there, which again, I think is a really good one. If you're someone who has more of a bigger putter, bigger head, mallet type putter, I like the three lines on there. It just makes it look so easy. You know exactly where that thing is aimed uh, when you're setting up, okay? So use that, that'll really help you um, get more confident in where you're aiming over the putt so that you're not over the ball, kind of wondering and trying and making a poor stroke because uh, you're not sure if uh, you're on the right line. All right, so now let's talk about chipping and playing some different types of shots, okay? So again, just for reference, I have a lob wedge right now, okay? So when you're watching the height of the balls come off here, you can kind of just know this is a lob wedge. So with what we learned last time, basic chipping technique, right? That ball position slightly back, weight just slightly forward, turn, turn, keep that height, staying nice and tall. Okay. It's a nice kind of basic shot that gives us kind of a medium trajectory. So let's say I want to hit the ball lower. First, just grab a different club, less loft, that ball is going to come out lower. We can make the exact same swing we just worked on with a basic chip using a sand wedge instead of a lob wedge or a gap wedge instead of a lob wedge. The ball is going to come out lower, going to roll more, it's not going to have as much spin. Perfect. That'll help me roll up this hill. But for argument's sake, or just a, another way of doing this, I'm gonna just, to hit this ball lower, I want that face square as opposed to slightly open, how I'd have for a basic shot. I want that ball position just slightly more back in my stance. Okay. Just inside that trail foot, still leaning to the left side. And as I come through, you know, still feeling like my hands are leading the way. Essentially, we're just moving that ball position, but making sure that we get everything moving to the target here, okay? So for a lob wedge, you can tell that's fairly low. But still, just so you know, that ball still will have some spin on it. So if you're going up a hill, I don't recommend it. It's hard to judge it, okay? Judge the spin. And then we have just a regular, you know, the regular chip shot. We'll just see kind of the height of that. Okay, comes off a little bit higher. So now is where I want to chat about hitting one higher. Okay, a lot of times people think, and I'm talking about high, but not like flopping high. We'll get into that in a sec. A lot of people think they got to swing for this flop, even though on just most regular shots, all I want to do here differently is I want to open the face more. That's it. I'm making the same swing. Ball position can be more in the center as opposed to the back foot for a low shot. It's closer to center, but I'm just opening that face more. But from there, the action, the swing, the technique is all the same as the basic chip shot. Okay? Nothing needs to change. Again, we're trying to not complicate this, not make it so hard. And again, I'm, I'm teaching this, and I did this as a tour player, teaching high-level golfers still do stuff like this. We don't have to complicate it, all right? So opening that face, ball position could be maybe a touch more forward, just in the middle, right? And because that face is more open, it's going to go higher. It's going to go shorter. I'm going to have to swing a little harder, all right? So face is more open. Swing a little harder, but everything back together, through together, everything's kind of the same technique. And that ball just kind of pops up a little better, all right? And again, that's gonna help you use the bounce, the bottom of the club better, so that if you hit behind it a touch, you still get away with it, okay? Now, since we're talking about that, a quick thing about bounce, okay? This is more advanced. Every club has a certain degree of bounce. So the higher the number, the more bounce it's gonna have. That means that it's good in soft conditions. So right now, I have four degrees of bounce. I don't recommend this to anyone other than people who are at a very high level with their hands and chipping. Um, that just means that mine is very sharp here. So these shots that I've hit, 
If I don't hit them just right, I'm going to chunk them. Whereas if someone has 12 degrees of bounce, like three times as much, and they hit behind it, the ball or the club just bounces and they get away with it better. But where mine would be good is if it was really hard. Middle of summer, firm conditions, and as soon as you hit the ground, your club's bouncing off like concrete. Then mine is going to be this nice little uh, sharp edge that slips underneath the golf ball, uh, in between the golf ball and the ground. Whereas someone with too much bounce, they can barely get the club underneath the ball. And it just keeps bouncing and bouncing. All right, so just knowing that, you can maybe get a couple different wedges depending on the type of year or the time of year, or we're just going to have to learn how to play it a little different. We don't want to open the face too much if you have a lot of bounce and it's firm. Okay, you'll just constantly keep bouncing, topping it. Okay, it just doesn't work. So um, we got that kind of higher shot just by opening the face up for a basic shot. Now let's pop it up even higher. Okay, so more of a flop shot. So really all that we're going to do differently here is I want to go ahead, open the face more. We're going to be going more into our bunker setup that we talked about last time. All right, wider stance, so our hands are lower, face is open, ball position slightly forward, leaning to our front side. We're going to have more wrist hinge. We're going to throw down at the ground more. Okay, this is obviously really tough to do if it's super soft and, and muddy. Okay, your club will just go into the ground. As long as there's some, um, some level of firmness under there, we'll be okay. okay. Otherwise, if it is really soft, I don't want to be going down into the ground too much. I'd be kind of more flat, right? Try to just um, be a little bit more flat to the ground, then I won't have to worry about chunking it so much. So face is open. I'm going to aim a little more left with my body, all right? Leaning to my left, going to pick this up. I'm not too concerned where this goes. I'm not usually going to flop it from this spot. Uh, adding a little bit of acceleration and keeping that face open like we would with a bunker shot. Okay, so you'll notice straight up and then it doesn't really go anywhere once it lands. Great shot to have sometimes, <laughs> right? It's fun to do just to show off or if we're in a really tricky situation, we just don't see it happening. We don't need it that often, okay? So play around with uh, these different ways of setting up to these shots just by club face, all right, for the low, medium, high, and you become, as long as you keep more of the same swinging action, you'll become a much better chipper uh, more consistently. Okay, so before we finish up on chipping, I wanted to talk about hitting some shots out of the rough. Okay, so when we're in the rough, obviously the grass is going to be longer than what we were working on over here in the fairway. All right. Now, the things that we need to understand here is when the grass is longer and the ball's in there in the rough here, that means that we're going to catch this grass, this long grass behind the ball first. Okay, we're going to hit that first which essentially means there's going to be grass getting in the way of your club head and the ball, right? There's going to be a layer of grass you're going to hit. So we got to understand that that means something's getting in the way of the ball. That's going to slow the ball down coming off of the club. Okay. So essentially like we're chunking the shot a little bit, similar to a bunker shot. So what would that mean? If I made a normal shot or a normal swing here versus the fairway, this one's going to come off very uh, slowly. Okay, it's not going to jump off as fast. All right, so that means that I'm probably going to need to swing a little harder. And depending on the rough, sometimes we get really long rough, which is going to slow it down, or it could be really thick, depending on whereabouts in the world you're playing. So what I like to see for setup here is I want to go and I want to open my club face a little bit. Okay. The reason is, is because we need to know, again, this ball is not, we're going to essentially be chunking it. So there's not going to be a lot of spin on it. The ball is going to end up rolling more. It's not going to stop super fast. And we got to swing harder to get through that rough. Okay. So I like to open that face to help me get that ball to pop up a little bit here. Okay. Which allows me to swing a little harder to get through the grass 
without worrying my ball is just going to go flying over the green if I did with a square straight club face. From there, ball position, I like to put that ball position maybe a little bit more in the back of the stance here. Um, again, similar to regular chipping, but we're just looking to make sure that we're coming down into the ground a little steeper than we would with a basic chip shot. Because otherwise, when that ball's sitting in the grass and we come in here nice and shallow, like a good uh, fairway shot, we might just hit the middle of the ball and have it roll over the green. So I need to think about picking this club head up a little bit and throwing it down into the ground. Okay. Open face, ball back, pick that club head up a little bit, throw it down into the ground. Let it kind of pop up. All right, so here in the bunker today, what I wanna talk about some more advanced stuff is short shots versus long bunker shots. And then what I got is also, I've kind of raked it up to make this side a little more fluffy and this side nice and firm here. So talking about fluffy lies versus firm lies. So first off, let's get into the short versus long. So very simply, shorter shots, we want more loft. So I got my lob wedge here, my 60 degree. I got that face more open. Ball position slightly, so we got middle of my stance, ball position slightly forward. Very similar to how I kind of explained uh, in the last episode, bunker technique. Now, thing here is that I'm gonna be really opening that club face. Okay, I wanna get nice, um, nice and wide so that my hands get nice and low, right? So from here, getting that nice and wide, nice and low, that's gonna really aim that club face up to the sky. And then the biggest thing is when I have that face so open and so up to the sky, I have to swing fast. I need that acceleration. Otherwise I'm leaving it right here in the bunker. Okay, so that just forces me to get some speed and speed uh, with loft is gonna help kind of get that ball to come up and it's not gonna go very far. Even with the speed, I'm not gonna be hitting this shot that far. Okay. So then as we go and talk about how does that change if I need a longer shot, okay? Because that was essentially pretty much like a, a basic shot, just opening the face more. But the longer ones are where we usually have a tough time. So two ways of doing it. One, we're going to change clubs, okay? So depending on how long, let's say I got 40 yards, I'm going to change to either my sand wedge or my gap wedge. But even still, right now with me sticking with this club, I can still make it work, one, by moving the ball position slightly back in my stance, okay, so more closer to the middle, and two, I'm not going to have that face as wide open, I'm going to go and adjust it to be a little bit more closed. And then the third is I want, and how we talked about last time is we get a lot of wrist hinge typically and throw that through to keep that face open. Now, I'm still going to have a little wrist hinge, but it's going to feel wider in here, okay? I'm going to feel like it's a wider swing, not so much of this steep uh, angle there where I'm going to be throwing it so much. That's going to help me uh, get a little bit more distance out of it, not kind of get into the sand so deep. So ball position a little more back, face a little more closed, feel wider here. Now, I'm still trying to hit behind the ball. Right, I still have that uh, contact a little bit behind the ball, about an inch. So now, let's talk about, here's a good example, getting this ball right up on top of a fluffy lie here. It's fluffy is very similar to a long bunker shot, meaning that I want to have more of this wider, shallower angle of the club head coming into the sand. Because when I'm sitting on fluffy sand and I pick this up and throw it down in there, my club head's just gonna keep digging, 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 and I'll probably just go under it and leave it just in front of me. So uh, I can still have that face open, because as we learned in chipping, when that face is open, we're gonna use more of the back of the club, the bounce. And that's gonna stop our club from digging so deep into the sand in the fluffy stuff. So face is still open a bit here. 
that ball position can still be a little forward to center. And then I'm going to feel like a little bit wider, uh, wider in my arc here versus a regular uh, short bunker shot. And then where people really struggle is getting over here into the firm stuff, which is what we see a lot in the winter time or after it's rained or something like that, really compact. And so what we got to understand is when we hit into sand like that, our club is naturally just going to bounce off, right? Uh, if I, especially if I have that face open, it's going to hit and bounce off. So that's where we got to take that open face and close it a little bit. Because now I want to use the sharp edge of the front of the club here to help me dig into the sand so that I don't just bounce off and blade it into the bunker edge here. Okay, so ball position can be close to middle, all right? That face is not as open and I still now I want to have a little wrist hinge because I do want to have that sense of driving a bit more into the sand so that I'm a little steeper so it doesn't just bounce off the top. Okay, so just know on those shots there, when we don't open the face as much in this kind of lie, the ball is going to come out lower and it's probably going to go further and release more. So those are just some ideas on how we can play a variety of shots from the sand. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you can take a few pieces away from those advanced short game techniques to help save a few shots around the green. So we'll see you next time on Develop the Ultimate Golf Game.